now that I have the volume cropped, my next task is to try to isolate as much as possible just the bone inside this cropped area. To do that, I'm going to use segment editor. So again, this menu, this pull down menu has two, you say all modules, you'll see every one of the options you have. Um, if instead you see the, um, you just go down the list, the more popular or more frequently used items are right here. So we're going to go to the segment editor and I'm going to say add and I'm going to tell it to name this scapula. So I double click the word and then I'm going to choose um, threshold. Now what threshold is doing is it's making everything green. Now I, I just adjusted this earlier. By default this is going to come on looking like that. The whole screen is going to be or the whole area is going to be green. And if I change this I can adjust it to get so it recognizes the bone. And that's one of the reasons we were adjusting the levels and the contrast. We want this threshold to be able to identify the bone um, from the soft tissue. Now if I say apply, it should apply that. Um, and then if I say show 3D, it should show me the bone in this 3D window. Now it looks like it didn't work, but I think it did. There's a little icon up here that says center the 3D view on the scene. And there you go. When I click that, it actually finds the uh, object that I made and centers it. So you can see now, it, one of the reasons I had to crop this as tightly as I did, I think it would be more obvious in a little bit, is I wanted to uh, make it easy for me to get rid of some of the other bones so I can get this. So left mouse is allowing me to tumble. If I use the command key and the left mouse, I can rotate the entire image. And then um, right mouse up and down is allowing me to pan in. And middle mouse up and down is allowing me to pan. I'm sorry, I said right mouse is allowing me to dolly, dolly in and out. So there's your relationship between the, the scapula, the, the ribs, a portion of the clavicle. Uh, you can see there's some holes and things. It, it's difficult to get the threshold absolutely perfect so that it sees all bone, including the cancellus or, or spongy bone. But we've got a pretty good chunk there. Now, what I'd like to do is focus on just this window. So I'm going to go down where it says 3D only. And now I can get a better, closer view. Okay, so next thing I'd like to do is isolate the scapula further. Um, and you notice the ribs are like little pieces floating out here, whereas the scapula and the humerus are touching one another. Uh, the clavicle also seems to be floating. It's not touching anything. So what I'm going to do is use, I'm going to use a tool called um, Islands. And the Islands effect, which is right here, there they are. Um, I, the software is being told to keep the largest island. In other words, keep the area that you're seeing that is the largest. Now, theoretically, if I did this right, the largest island should be the humerus. Oh, look at that. Wow. There must have been just enough a gap, just enough of a gap between the uh, humerus and the glenoid fossa to recognize all of those as separate entities. Now I have not been able, I've done this several times, I've never been able to get just the scapula that quickly. Usually what I have to do is after I eliminate the islands, which usually gets rid of the ribs, I have to use the scissors uh, to select things and the um, paintbrush to select things. And you'll see in your my course's lessons where I talk about um, using those things to um, 
to pick areas, okay? So the scissors actually are kind of like a lasso and you circle around it and you can then eliminate what's ever in that area. And then the paintbrush is really being used so that you can delicately paint away.